when I came from Heathrow to London with a taxi actually, two, three of us together, and the, it was night time. And you know the yellow lights, temper, like mm, high up, and it was flashing like this, you know. And I was, in my mind, I was a bit scared. I said, what was, what is this strange thing? Because I never saw a traffic light before. And uh, I thought uh, it could be a Satan's a lamp. This is a saying in our countries, Satan is showing you lights and then he will take you in strange lands. So don't follow that, you know. <laughs> so I was thinking of these stories. <laughs> I thought, am I saying this? <laughs> to the traffic light. And, but uh, b slowly I was getting used to these things. Other strange thing was, when I came to this country and looked at the young girls, I was a young man at that time, and when I saw them with short hair, sometimes I thought, oh, is she a female or is she a boy, you know? Back in 1972, we came in this country, and before that I lived in Uganda. I was born in Uganda, and uh, we used to own our own businesses there, until Amin decided that all Asians must live. And we had no choice but to leave everything behind and uh, uh, catch the plane which is available and come, come here uh, with virtually, I think, 20 pounds in our pockets. That's what we were allowed to bring. That's it. But then the aim was to make it, how to be a bit prosperous and get on with it and keep trying hard and hard. And when you work hard, the opportunities are always there and you try to take them. And you do get well eventually. <laughs> the satisfaction of having owning a theater and having something for the community is a different buzz altogether. Okay. Don't stop, can't talk oh, much for the working. As you can see there, practicing going on at the moment, so you can't talk with loudly. At the moment you can see there is a youth theater program which we've got, and that is an in-house program. So we've got very good um, director there. He's training all these youths who are there, are local youths. When I first moved in the street, when I met my wife came into UK in 2002, and it was in Glastonbury, and she wears a hijab, and uh, she was she didn't have any problem in uh, living in Glastonbury, as in uh, dress up different, because like in Glastonbury everyone dress up different. When I came in here for study, it wasn't easy. There was a Turkish restaurant there in Salisbury. Then I was using that restaurant as my lunch or my dinner. Then later on, they asked, we were game friendly, and they asked me to, can I do Saturdays? like weekends. Then I end up be partner with the, my, one of my friends in uh, Salisbury and work towards my way and end up buying that shop, then my own shop. Then later on I open um, about seven other outlets, takeaway outlets in the Southwest. We speak mainly Turkish with the kids, with, between us and we speak uh, we watch Turkish TV as well, and this little young boy is just gonna learn in Turkish first <laughs> and laughing. Muhammad Ali had to be sending him on a laugh with Peter. So I didn't even him. I belong to a group, a Christian democratic group, um, who who was headed by a Jesuit priest. In the, I was in the convent for eight years. During that time, it was President Ferdinand Marcos who was in charge of, of the whole republic. Uh, he was very good during his first term, but after that, he became a proper dictator. We were making the, the poor people aware of uh, what he was doing. 
um, we were blacklisted. And uh, one day my uncle, who was in the army, came home and said to me, you better get out of the country. Recently I met a, a, a group of boys in the town. I was shopping, laden with my shopping bags, and um, a, a group of them was coming towards me and say, Chinese ding dong ching chong. And I said, get it right, <laughs> because I'm not Chinese. I'm, I I'm come from the Philippines, and therefore I'm Filipino. I will, it's not my fault they don't know the difference.